As a new developer, you might be facing a challenge on how to package all your compiled Java classes into one executable file. This is something similar to what you may be used to with a Windows EXE file. With Java, you can do this by creating what's called a jar file. Now you may be asking, what in the world is a jar file exactly? And what does it contain? The simple answer to this is that it's just a zip file, but with a .jar extension. JAR is the abbreviation form for Java Archive. A Java file is basically a package file format typically used to group together one or more Java classes, other additional JAR files for your reference, associated metadata, as well as other resources you might need like text, images, etc. And all of these are just packaged together into one file for distribution. When you want to share your hard work with others that you've created, you need to give them a JAR file. Now, there are several methodologies that we can use to create a JAR file, and there are several production tools you could use as well, like um, Maven or Gradle or even Ant, to name a few. Today, I'm going to show you and introduce you to a very simple way to do this with IntelliJ Community Edition. This process hasn't changed too much from version to version of IntelliJ. So you should be able to adapt this to whatever version you are using. Without further ado, let's get started and open up IntelliJ. Okay, we have IntelliJ open. We need to find the new project button and click on it. Now you can also do this by clicking on file, new and project. With a new project selected on the left, for the name, I'm going to type simple calculator. And then in the bottom right, click Create. IntelliJ has created for me a main.java file with some simple code in it. We're going to create an additional Java class file for this project to demonstrate how they're packaged in this one project. Now first, let's go ahead and create a package, and then we can move the main.java into that package. We're going to right-click on Source, click New, and choose Package. For the package, I'm going to call it com.mdr. Solutions.calculator. And then I'm going to hit Enter or Return on the keyboard. Next. We're going to move the main.java inside of that package and we'll click refactor. Inside of the main.java, I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of this excess code, clean it up, or remove the breakpoint, and I'm also going to take out this comment here at the top. Save that. Next, I want to go back to the package again. We're going to right click, select new, and Java class. And here we're going to call this our calculator. We're going to create four different private methods, and we're going to do these pretty quickly. So I'm going to copy and paste to keep this video moving along. First, type private long add. This is going to take a parameter of long num1, long num2. And we're going to simply just say return num1 plus num2. I'm going to copy this. Come down below. I'm going to change the method name now to multiply. I'm going to change the operator here to an asterisk for multiplication. Next, I want to copy these two um, methods again, and we're going to basically create, um, overload these methods, but these are going to be return type of void, and they're going to accept one parameter of scanner, 
hit enter there to add the import at the top. And we'll just call this input. And we're going to do the same thing for the second one. Copy and paste that in. Now we'll fix what is here in just a moment with the variables that are, are not proper. But what I also want to do here is we're going to go ahead and throw a input mismatch exception because we're going to be dealing with conversion and uh, we're going to pass this error off up to the calling methods later. So we're just going to say throws input mismatch exception and we'll just copy that and put it down here below as well. Okay, inside of our method, delete that. And the first thing we're going to type is system out print line. And we're going to say, please uh, enter the first number. And then we're going to type long num1 equals input dot next long. Let's copy this phrase up here again. Paste it below. Please enter the second number. We'll say long num2 equals input dot next long. Now, if by some reason they enter a letter instead of a number, the throws input mismatch exception is going to catch that exception and throw it up to the uh, pass that error message up to the calling method. Okay. Now for this purpose, these are both identical at this point. So I'm just going to copy these and come down here and input those and the second one as well. Next, I'm going to take my method I already created for addition and I'm just going to say um, long answer equals add. And I'm going to pass in num1 and num2. And then below that, we have a system out print line. If you're seeing me use these shortcut key codes, you can basically type SOUT and tab, and IntelliJ will automatically create the system out print line statement for you. Um, I'm going to type the Answer is space colon okay, plus answer. And some of this I can just copy and paste down below and we'll we'll um we'll take care of what it's supposed to be in a moment. Okay. All right, so we're going to change this to multiply. And this part is done. Hey, you made it this far in the video. Would you do me a favor and just click that little like button and subscribe in the bottom, as well as leave a comment of something that you've learned so far. All right, let's get back to coding. Next, I want to create a menu method. Then we're going to say public void menu. And inside this menu method, I need to think about how I'm going to allow this computer program to run without stopping unless I enter some type of a gateway code, as well as how I'm going to catch all of those exceptions that are being thrown back up to me. So first of all, let's go ahead and create um, some type of a gateway variable. I'm just going to say Boolean. Come on, keyboard. Boolean run equals true. And then I'm going to create a while statement, which has the variable run. Inside my while statement, I'm going to type system out print line. Please choose. And oops, please choose an operation. My ability to spell today is not working very well. Here we 
low. And I'm going to give the operations, the, the, the menu options that can be used. So we'll just simply type system out print line one for addition. Two for multiplication. System out print line. We're going to use nine as our code to exit. Okay, nine to exit. Okay, and I want to do one other thing here. I want want it to be apparent where the cursor entry is at. So I'm just going to type system out print line and let's take out the ln statement there. Inside, I'm going to do a Double quotes, dash, dash, arrow with space. Okay. Now we're going to enter the scanner. And I want to capture the scanner input if there is an exception. So let's do this first. Let's say try. And here on the other curly bracket, I'm going to say catch. And in the parentheses, I'll type input mismatch exception. I'll call the variable ex. And then the exception I'm going to throw is system out print line invalid selection. Let's say try again. If they enter a letter like C or T or any other letter of the alphabet except one, two, or nine, it's going to throw um, an input mismatch exception, right? All right. We'll catch the condition if they don't enter uh, a proper number later on. But for right now, we just want to catch the scenario where they enter a character and not a numeric. All right, so I have my try in place. So I'm just going to go ahead and instantiate my scanner again. And I'm going to call it input equals new scanner. We're going to supply it with the system.in. We'll hit in, enter. We'll say int selection equals input next. Int. Okay. Now I'm going to use just a uh, simple um, short circuit logic here to exit the program if they enter the selection. And really, if you want the program to stop, this is the place you want that logic to hit first. Exit the program immediately if the option is available. So we'll say if selection is equivalent to 9, which is the exit. We're first going to say that run now equals false and we'll break from the loop. Okay, and I'm going to put a comment here so for us to remember what's happening. This is the short circuit logic to exit. Now we're going to hit enter a couple of times and we're going to apply the rest of the logic. So if selection equals one, Oops, there we go, curly brackets. We're going to call the add method, which takes a scanner. We'll pass in the scanner. Else, if selection equals two, we're going to call the multiply method, which takes again an input. And then else, this is where um, an exception hasn't been thrown, meaning they haven't yet entered a letter like S, T, V, whatever, right? But they haven't as well entered a correct number of 1, 2, and 9. So this is where we're going to say a, another system out print line message and just say very simply invalid selection. Try again.
All right, this is our code. Um, normally I would say, let's go ahead and click the, um, the run method, but we don't have any, any way of running it here. So let's go back to our main and we're going to just basically make the call to instantiate the calculator code. So we're going to say calculator, calculator equals new calculator. And all we're going to call is the calculator menu method. And that's it. Now we've done this so far. So now how do we get this all wrapped up? These two classes all wrapped up in one jar file so that we can, we can use it. Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to, we're going to go up here to file, go to project structure, and we're going to click under project settings and select artifacts. There's project settings, there's artifacts. We're going to click plus, and the artifact that we're going to choose is a jar. And we'll say from modules with dependencies. Make sure you select that from modules with dependencies. Now inside, we have to select the main class. And this is important because when we execute the jar, it has to know what main class to call. And as you know, you can't execute a Java class unless there's a public static void main method. So we're going to click on this. <clears throat> and of course, it's searching for a main class. It's found it. You can also go to project and drill down to um, the main class and click on it and say, OK. All right, all this is good. We'll click OK. We're going to click Apply. Make sure you click Apply and then OK. And we need to build it. So we'll go up here to Build. We'll go to Build Artifacts, Simple Calculator.jar, and we'll select Build. You may not be able to see down here yet because it's it's hidden in um, on this window. But at the bottom of the screen, it is built the jar. And if we go up to the out, we can see that there are now there's an out folder, there's an artifacts folder, a simple calculator underscore jar, and then the simple calculator jar. So what I want you to do next is come down to the terminal, select it. We're going to navigate to that folder. So we're going to type ls to see where we're at first. And we can see that there's the out and the source directory. So let's cd out ls cd artifacts. If you hit tab again, it'll show you the next directory below. We'll hit enter. We'll do ls. And there's our simple calculator dot jar. Now, how do we execute the jar file? Well, we do this by typing Java dash jar. This is the option that says to Java, hey, we're going to execute a jar file. And then we're going to type in the name of the jar file. Hit enter and it's executed the class. So let's go ahead and type one. Please enter your first number. Let's do 45. Test our exception handling. Let's type the letter G. Invalid selection, try again. Okay, so it's kicked us back out. One for addition, we'll type 45 and 997, 987. And it does the addition, there's the addition. And because it's in a try loop, if you remember, if we go back up to our calculator, we can see that we're in, uh, excuse me, we're in, a, we're in a while loop. And so it's going to do this until we enter a number to exit. So let's go ahead and test exiting and that is nine hit enter we've exited the program now let's say you wanted to look at the contents of the jar file and see what's in it exactly you can simply do this just by running an unzip program so um, we can basically make a copy of the simple calculator dot jar and i'm going to call it simple calculator dot zip and if you look now, there's two files. To keep this separate so I don't corrupt my code, I'm going to go ahead and make a directory here and call it the unzip directory. I'm going to move the simple calculator.zip to my unzip directory. I'm going to cd to the unzip directory. You can see it's there. 
and we've moved it from the previous directory. And if you need to, to see this, you'll, you're going to see that IntelliJ is keeping track of all of this up here for us. Okay. All right. So in on Mac OS and Linux, it's fairly straightforward. You may have to install the unzip program, but with Mac OS, you can just type unzip simple calculator.zip and it will unzip that file. If we go ahead and click on the unzip folder. You can see that these are the folders that have been unzipped from inside of it. We have a com MDR solutions calculator folder and then our two classes. And IntelliJ, if you click on them, you'll see it's still a class. It is decompiling them so it can see the actual code that's inside, right? Uh, but let's take a look at the meta INF folder. And I'm showing you this because maybe you want to do this manually by hand. Well, this is how you would do it. You would create this structure and then you would zip it up and uh, create the jar file. Now there's some other can commands to do this with Java to jar up a file, but I'm not gonna show you that today. But what I wanna show you for sure is this. In the manifest.mf, we have these two um, key value pairs. We have manifest-version equals 1.0, and then we have main-class, and it lists where the main-class is at. In order for a jar file to be executable, meaning for you to double-click on it in it to run that operation, you have to have this meta inf directory and this manifest.mf listing where the main class is, exactly as you see it. All right, so that's it for now. Uh, you've learned a lot in this video about how to wrap up all of your class files and jar files into one jar file, as well as to see what the components of how a jar file is made and how it's executable. I really hope this helps. And um, again, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know how you are, where you're at, and uh, even where you're from. Take care.